If you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask you to turn to 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter number 1, and we're going to begin reading in verse 3. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, uh, beginning in verse 3. The Bible says, According as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promise that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of this world, uh, of the escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and temperance patience, and patience godliness. Mm. And godliness, brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh this thing, these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and have forgotten that he was purged from his own sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for your goodness and your watch care. Lord, we thank you for this church. Lord, uh, in the time that we live, we praise you for it. God, we thank you and praise you for each and every individual that is here this morning. Uh, because we certainly know from the Word of God that no one's here by accident, but rather by divine appointments, and we give you praise for that. God, help us to preach your Word according to your mercy and grace, and we to be faithful to give you the praise for it, for it is in Christ's name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. Now, I'll be preaching this morning on living on the border. Now, what I have found through uh, 23 years of ministry, uh, uh, that really 27 years of ministry, 23 years of pastoring, that people prefer to live on the border. Now, certainly you would give me some warning if I was right here and still walking forward. Uh, because what's going to happen is I'm going to fall. What's going to happen is I'm going to be in mess. But you know what I've found with people in the modern day? This is where they like to live. Just as close to the edge of the world that they possibly can get. Mm -hmm. Now the problem with that, my safety is back here. This is the center of the pulpit. And if I want to be safe, this is where I need to be. And if you notice, it's in the center of the pulpit. You know where your safest spot is to be is the very center of God's will. Amen. Now, uh, those of us who believe in sovereignty, and I've even heard uh, people suggest this, and when you get into this line of thinking, you're over in the primitive Baptist theology that this is just as fine as one. But let me tell you, uh, dear friend, you will fall. Will it be a spiritual death? No, but you'll, uh, you, you'll lose your testimony right here. Mm -hmm. I will guarantee you that. And, and, and where we need to be because we're fleshly, carnal creatures is in the center of God's will. We do not need to live on the border. And, uh, and, and it's not pleasing unto God. Several years ago, Matthew David, on one of his excursions, uh, out to Idaho when he was in, uh, when he was courting uh, Dessa, they decided to go up in the border, border of Canada and you do have to have a passport and he had one he's traveled to a lot of places with me and, and when he got to the border you think a friendly country just to the north of us you're not talking Mexico you're talking Canada they questioned him up one side and down the other that somebody that really had nothing to do would want to be in their country and finally they let him through because his father-in-law kind of vouched for him a little bit but you see they were apprehensive 
of an unknown person being near the border. Now, I'm apprehensive when the Lord's people are near the border. Now, you three better be too. Uh, in your years of pastoring ahead, you don't need to see your congregation here. You need to see them over there. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's safety in that place and there's danger and a risk for fall in this place. And that's really what Peter is writing about as he begins this letter the second time. And it's a general epistle, so that says that more than one church had the same problem. He wasn't writing to a location. He was writing to a generality. Now, I don't know this in my own theory. Probably Corinth, I mean, uh, Jerusalem got it first and they saw there was some good content and shared it with everybody else. And so he, uh, in the beginning of this second round, he says, according to his divine power, have he given us all things that pertain unto life. Now, what I have found in my years of ministry, oh, Brother Larry, I can't. Well, this says your redemption gives you all things pertaining unto life. Uh, you know what that means? It means you can't. So where does can't come from? You. Why do you want to live on this border? You. Why, 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 were, why are we inclined to that? Right here. This old stinking ungodly flesh that you cannot ever, ever trust. Yeah. And, and, and so we find then that, so when we get in this condition, and every one of us do, we'd be lying if we said we didn't, when we're in this condition, you're at risk. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? Uh, I think it was uh, in the Psalms, he, he wrote this, that at any time that your foot should slip. That, that's a pretty dangerous thing, is it not? And so, uh, uh, years ago, I'll give you an example, and, and I couldn't see it. It came, y'all remember that winter of 77, 78, those of you that are old enough to remember, so that would be me and Junior and Diane. Uh, it, it, it was a rough winter, y'all remember that? And just people couldn't get to work or nothing. And we still had an outdoor, outdoor toilet, and me and Judy was going out to the toilet, and I slipped and fell, like this on my knee and when I came up there was a board stuck to it. Now the reason why I was off the path because you couldn't find the path and the reason I fell and did that I was off the path and I couldn't see it and I still have a scar right there on my knee even to this day and that's been close to 50 years ago and you, you know what the reason this is dangerous is you can't see it now, this is the thing, uh, you remember the danger that's out there. You hear me, dear friend? I'm not trying to harp on you, yeah. and I'm not trying to be mean to you. I'm giving you some real warning right. of the danger that's out there. Right. And, and, and so we find then that Paul, I mean, excuse me, Peter says that we do have the spiritual equipment to do what needs to be done. We, we, we can do it if we will. Godliness through the knowledge. Now, where do you get the knowledge? Of course, reading this book is always the basis of our truth, but you know what? It, it, you know when you understand this best is when it's mingled with the Holy Ghost. You, you know what? If you're not studying in, 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 the, in the mind of God what this is, it's like reading the Sears and Roebuck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Empty pages, is it not? Mm -hmm. I, I've read this book when I've got more out of the Lord, Lord Ingalls Wilder than I do this. And if you'll be honest with me, you have too. And, and so we find then, as the Lord's people, that we should approach it per prayerfully because our, per our preparation is this. Now notice the end of verse 3, he says, He's called you unto virtue. That's where he wants you to be. What, what is virtue? It, 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 it means impaling goodness. It means presenting as you should. It means looking the part. And, and that's virtue. And that's where he would have us to have us to live. Whereby are given unto thee exceeding great precious promises. Now, when you do not think that you can do it one more day. Remember, exceeding great precious promises. 
Uh, they, they are beyond our comprehension. And then he says that by these, you might be partakers of the divine nature. Now ask yourself this morning, do you want to present Satan or do you want to present Christ? Because you know what? Even the redeemed can present both. And the reason you have the ability still to present both is right here in front of you. The very thing that's talking to you this morning, the, the very thing that you're looking back at, that is the reason that we can present both. And until you give this up one day, or it's changed in a moment of a twinkling of an eye, you know what? You'll still be fighting both. And so... Paul makes that uh, exceedingly clear. So we're partakers of the divine nature or the godly nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. So there's a corruption about us. And besides this, given an all diligent to add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Now, you think this week, and, 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 and shame on me, but at least I'm honest, I haven't given enough thought and enough prayer and enough study. What have you done, done this week to add virtue? You know what virtue is? It really has two meanings. One is like a, an adjective or a, uh, a characteristic how you present. And a virtue can be a possession. Mm -hmm. Something that, that, that is of a benefit to you. Something that will be a help in time of need. And so he says, I want you to have these in your life. And you're not going to get them by sitting on your seat of do nothing. And listen, dear friend, you're going to need them. There'll come a day when you're under attack and you know what? I, I find, and, and people that, I, you know, as much as you can know, uh, convinced of the Holy Ghost, and, and again, we never can fully know about anybody but you. I know about me, that's it. and that's the only thing I know about. Yeah. Me and Donna have been married for over 33 years, and I think about, I know about her, but you know what? I bet uh, Gordon Downs thought he knew about Sue, too, don't you? No. Uh, and they've been married over 40 years, and the Lord uh, swung in and saved her one day. Mm -hmm. So I, I'll answer for myself and nobody else. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm pretty certain of Donna. And you know why? Because of virtue. Uh, I see what's present, and I, I've seen her how she reacts under stress. And. You, you know why we've been able to come through some pretty hard knocks? Because of the Lord and because of experience and because of being ready. And, and, and so we find that this equipment don't come easy, but it's certainly something that you, that, that you need in the day in which we live. Verse 5, and besides this... Uh, Notice that, let me get to the end of verse 4 and we'll go. Uh, having escaped the corruption that is in this world. Now remember, living on the border, where's the corruption? Right here. Now Donna made some, uh, uh, Donna made some uh, crock pot chicken and dressing uh, while we was going down to uh, Katie's uh, yesterday. And when we got home, uh, I hadn't ate much all day, and I said, well, I better eat a little something. And I, dumped, uh, I got me some out, and she said, Larry, you better put that in the microwave. Now, you talk about a woman that's scared of salmonella. Mm -hmm. She's right here. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I nuked it and, 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 and did my preparation but you know what? Now, I'm not as scared as her, and I, I'll do it out of respect. But you know what? Who knows? You know, me just taking a big bite to be a smart aleck, they'd be living on the border, wouldn't it? You know, living on the border is watching things going on and wish you were there. Living on the border is being enticed by at least... Well, me and I hope, huh? by the way that women look. 
that's living on the border. You know, it's much safer to nuke your meat than be in the middle. But be in the center of God's will. Listen, uh, church, there, there are risks out there every day that you live. There are consequences that come with it. And so he says, and besides this, verse 5, and besides this, giving all uh, diligence, and that means attention to detail, giving all, the, and besides all this, giving all diligence to add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Now, the two that I really want you to look at, because we've talked about virtue exten exten extensively, diligence. Now, what is diligence? It's attention to detail. Uh, uh, think about the, uh, the, uh, the temple and the wilderness tabernacle. You, you ever think about how many chapters of the book of uh, Deuteronomy that we have that says, uh, make it this way. Make it this way. Make the rings this big. Yeah. Make them out of gold. Yeah. Make the cornice board with six of those right down the side and don't make it seven. That's pretty detailed, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what? I, I feel like his plan for my life is just as detailed. And I, I need to be right in the middle of it. And not because I want to show off, because it's safe. Mm. Uh, you know, and, and, and this makes me mad and, and, and you know, I've seen it so much. You know, the Bible says that women, a woman's hair is to be long. Is that right? But you know what? We don't need to run around and say, my wife's hair is longer than your wife's. Right? That's foolish, is it not? Yeah. But, why did, why? Why? My hair looked good long. <laughs> why? I don't need a why. It says it, and I'm to do it. That's it. The very center of God's will is to have my hair short. I don't need a why. You know why? You know what? When you don't have a why, that's where faith begins. Mm -hmm. Well, God said it, so it must, it must be the right thing, right? You know, and I don't know what, exactly what short is. Uh, I guess Adam's got us all beat, don't he? But I want mine to be shorter than my wife's. And, and when we come to stuff like that, I don't think you can overkill, do you? I really don't. I, I'd rather have too much than too little. What about spiritual gifts? Do you want just one? I believe if I had four or five, I could, I could do a lot better. So we find then, as Paul, I mean, excuse me, as Peter's writing this, he's saying, listen, you need these things. Uh, verse 6, and to knowledge, that's from the Word of God right in front of us, and and, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, which is self-control. If we ever lived in a day where temperance is almost non-existent, we live in it today. You know what? You, you young parents, bust their tails. That's why, you know, I, 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 I really kind of chuckled and I wanted to laugh out loud when Bella said, well, I have. <laughs> uh, uh, you know what? One day she'll thank me for that. One day she'll thank me for that. Because what it does is teach you self-control. You know where my borders were? Exactly where mom put them. Right? And you know where your kids' borders will be? They'll be exactly wherever you put them. And so we find then that we as the Lord's people, we need this self-control and we need patience. And you see in verse, the end of verse 6, uh, they lead to godliness. They, they lead into a godly life. 
brotherly kindness and to brother kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make it that you shall neither be barren or unfruitful. You know why our church is growing? You know what that means? It means you're barren. You know why you don't have any spiritual strength? That means you're barren. You know why you're overtaken to this world? It means you're barren. Living on the border and very satisfied to be there. I'm going to jump down to verse 10. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence. Attention to detail. A little bit at a time. Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Listen, dear friend, this morning, if you like it right here, make your calling and election sure. If this is where you stand comfortable, tipping your toe in it, make a call in the election sure this morning. Because you know what? I really believe, and I know I don't live here, but this is the safest place for me. Mm -hmm. This is where God keeps me where uh, I don't have to I don't have to stay on the word. Now, very quickly, in, in Genesis 19. I'll read you about a man that decided to do it the other way. Now, I believe Lot was a saved man, if I understand the Bible. He didn't act like it and didn't look like it, but he's a saved man. The Bible says, just Lot, did he not? Now, let me tell you that in, in the just Lot portion, I believe he was just with God. And that was all he was. He was just in God on the merit of grace and on the merit of the forelooking to Christ. And that's it. You know what the New Testament calls it? Saved so as by fire. Mm -hmm. that, that's what the New Testament calls it. And, and, and that was the story and the life of Lot. Now we're going to rush to this very quickly because I know we're we're quite deep into our time, but I think it's necessary to do this. And there came uh, 19 verse 1, Genesis 19 and verse 1, and there came two angels, and I personally believe this was Christ and the Holy Ghost, because you see them in Genesis 18 in their contact with Abraham. And there came two angels, and the reason that uh, the Lord God Jehovah did not come is because he's too sinful. I mean, he's too sinless and holy to get involved in this. And, and there came two angels to the Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. That means he was a leader. That means he was in the very middle of it. That means he had he was toe tapping on the edge. He was a leader. And Lot seeing them rose up to meet them and bowed himself. Uh, with his face toward the ground, he recognized the person of God, and he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, unto your servant's house. He's still identified as a servant of the Almighty into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise early, and go on your way. In other words, you come on in, we'll have some fellowship, and boy, hit the road. <laughs> you ever wanted that? God hit the road. You're making me nervous. Mm -hmm. Now, if you haven't thought that, <laughs> you felt it. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you're involved in sin and you want God over there with you? Uh, I don't think so. Now, I will tell you this, certainly by the character of God, you may want him, but he ain't going to be there. Now, we oh, the Holy Spirit dwells with you and you're always there. I believe that. Uh, I believe it's part of security. But listen, uh, don't 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 look for his leadership if you're in, out there in the world because you ain't gonna get it. You, you know what they're talking about is security. They're not talking really about what we think of in the way of the Holy Spirit. Uh, listen, the Holy Ghost is just as much God as any other being of God, and He's not going to be around sin. Plain and simple. And, and, and so we find then that uh, uh, Lot had no spirituality. He didn't want the Godhead down at his house. He wanted him to get up and go. Uh, verse 3, and, and they said, nay, we're not going to stay with you. You ever wonder why they said no to the invitation? You know what? A lot of times I bet we've done the same thing. 
What about the wicked stuff you got in your house? You want God to come in and watch what you watch on TV? You want Him to listen to the music you listen to? That's why He didn't want fellowship with God. He was embarrassed. Now, I know a lot of times people aren't, don't even blush anymore, do they? But that's the day which we live. You know, if you have the capability to blush, and, and the guys and the gals at work laugh at me, because some of the stuff to me they say is embarrassing. And they look and, and they will say, look at the preacher boy blushing. You know what I say to that? Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> I, I, I don't ever want to get to the point I don't blush. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and so, so we find then that Lot didn't want to around very long. He wanted to fix them some unleavened bread, have a little, have a little minimal fellowship with them. That's what represented the Lord's table in the Old Testament before the law existed. And he wanted to spend a little fellowship with them and God go on. That's that little two hour that they have down here at the Southern Baptist. I'll give you two hours, bless me if you can, and if not, I'll see you next week. Right? That's what Lot wanted. You, you know what that's a desire of? Of someone that's out of the will of God and living right here. That, that, that's the hallmark of them. And, and, and so we find that Lot had a plan <laughs> But it didn't coincide. Then the, the Godhead, or the, the two that was there, said, listen, we don't want to stay with you. <laughs> you ever wondered about that? Well, if you had a bunch of ungodly junk in your house, you think God's going to come in and, and cozy up to that mess? Certainly not. The reason they didn't want to go in there is they knew the condition of Lot's home. And you know who knows the condition of your home this morning? Two individuals, you and the Almighty. Right? Yeah. And, and, and so we find that's why they didn't go in. And at, at Lot's bidding, they finally go in with him and they have a little meal together. And I want you to see uh, in verse 5. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are these men which came unto thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Now listen, the way they wanted to know them wasn't me like this going up, hey, I'm Larry Lackley, I understand your Ken Glish. Listen, they didn't want to be introduced. <laughs> they wanted to hop in the bed with them. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that's how filthy and ungodly those cities were. Uh, how, how, how about y'all? The only way I'd get down there is to if the Almighty made me, but how do you like to go down to San Francisco and start a mission down in the middle of that muck? Now the problem is this, Lot wasn't starting a mission. Lot was into his neck up in it. And, and, and so we find then that, uh, that <laughs> they finally agreed to go in. The man came to the door. Now look in verse 8, he said, listen, I have two daughters in here that's virgins. Never known a man. You can have them. Now you can can you imagine such a depraved, ungodly father? Yeah, that just like me saying, take Sarah and Bella. Man, I'd have to be way out here to ever compromise my daughters for anything. That's where Locke was at. That's pretty good. That's about as low as you can get at it. You know what? Lot was saved, man. That's what should get your attention this morning. Mm. That, that, that's what should make you understand and know you ain't no better than this old boy here. Uh, then, because of the goodness and mercy of God, he shoved them out, brought, the angels did, the God people did, brought them back in, sealed, brought Lot back in, sealed the door, and smoked those people with blindness. See, God has a meaning of deliverance always, does he not? Now, notice what he says. 13, he says, their calls come up before me. 
then I'm taking a city out. You ever wondered? Now again, I preached on this Wednesday night. You know why God don't swallow people up like Corey and his band anymore? Because we have faith. You know why you can't walk across the Cumberland River this evening instead of driving across the bridge? It's because you have no faith. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ said. Is it not? Another time he says, you have little faith. And you know what? I believe those old boys with a lot better than stuff we're cut out of. And, and so we find, we find then that he gives him his plan. Lot runs down to his son's house, women of the, of the land that he took up with. They took up with. Listen, they, they weren't nothing but a bunch of those people that lived in that city. They married up with it. You know what? If one of mine, this is what I always told all of mine. Listen, you marry some heathen if you want to, but don't you expect me to be there. You know what? I believe he was there with bells on, don't you? Congratulations. Put his approval on their sin. So you know what? When he went down there and he witnessed to him, the Bible says he seemed as a mockery unto them. Listen, that's a rough place to be. You know what? I tell you this time and time again because I don't want you in the same situation I am. Uh, my, my friends that I hung with in high school, I'm nothing more than a mockery to them. I tried to witness to them, and they pretty much laughed me to scorn. You know what? I deserve that. I absolutely deserve it. And, and, and so we find then that that was Lot's situation. He th they thought the father and the father-in-law was foolish and stupid and, and, and goofy. And you know what? They did not follow him. They did not abide to it. And... Uh, uh, the results was tragic. Verse 15. And when the morning rose, when the angels hastened Lot, and arise, said, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are with thee, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of this city. And while they yet lingered. Now, <laughs> you know what? He was so out of the will of God, he still wouldn't set them go. How many people do you think will be sitting on go when the Lord calls us out of here? Everybody, oh, I, I'm just, I'm just waiting. Listen, don't brag about that unless you mean it. You know what? Ultimately, what does it say concerning Lot and his wife and his girls? They were literally grabbed out of the city. Mm -hmm. Do you think that sounds like they're inviting Jesus into their hearts? A goofball I talked to yesterday. <coughs> <coughs> you know what? You know what that is? Being drugged out of a city that's fixing to be burned. Now that's grace. That's the very definition of grace. Drug them out, made them ready, took them home. Now, you remember, I said, the center of God's will is back there. You know what the center of God's will for Lot was? You go to the mountains, flee into the mountains. Okay, God. Oh, I can't do that. It's just a little city right down here, just a little one. That's where I want to go. Even at the very brink of destruction, his way was better than God's way. God, I want to live right here. Please let me live right here. Okay. Now, we all know the famous one. His old lady looked back. You think she was saved? I thought she was lost in boots and a health school. I think the only one who came out of there saved was Lot. So let me tell you this, this evening. First of all, just because the Lord has delivered you physically, do not, it does not make you redeemed. 
not no sense whatsoever. What about his two girls? Girls, you want to have a, a child by your daddy? Oh, one God, the girl said to her sister, this is what we'll do. We'll get him drunk. You know what? For them to get uh, not drunk, man, that must have been his routine, wasn't it? They didn't have to just knock him in the head and pour it down his throat, did they? It was just a routine. The reason why, he was living right here. You know what? Not only uh, will you like booze, you like to get drunk right here. There's nothing wrong with alcohol, best I can find from the Bible. I think it should be medicinal. But I want to be back there. Have a child by each of them. Ungodly daughter said, listen, this is what we'll do. We'll get daddy drunk. First night I'll lie with him. We'll get him drunk again. Next night you lie with him. And you know what? Those two nations that came out of that mess was one of the biggest oppositions that Israel ever faced. See, sin has a result always. So, this morning I ask you, where are you at? Are you where the is at? Are you teetering on the edge this morning? <coughs> are you back there where you need to be? You know what? You'll never ever be a witness right here. You'll be a laughing stock. Be like Lot when he goes down to his boy's house and say, listen, judgment's coming. What about you? You say, Larry, you parked on uh, separation for 27 years. I'm not doing it so we can have a hair contest down here at New Testament. I'm doing it because it's safe for you. Uh, remember, I think Paul was writing. These boys, young boys, can correct me. I think it was maybe to Timothy. These things are safe. That's what he wrote to them. It wasn't legalistic. It was safe. Listen, church. This is not safe for you. You'll be off the edge. And more than being off the edge, which is horrible. Listen, you'll have no testimony that's left. None whatsoever. And you'll become like Lot. You know what? When I think of Lot, do you think of just Lot, just before God? That ain't the first thing I think about. When I get to thinking a minute, I praise God for that. I like that little verse. Remember just a lot next to the shortest verse in the Bible. What I think about is his testimony that he left behind in the view. I think it's about his mockery. I think about his wife showing exactly. You ever think about this? And I promise I'm almost done. He picked her out. Did you ever think about that? I think it's the first time she looked back. Do you, Jared? I don't. I believe that was her nature. And you know why that was her nature? Just like every hellbound sinner this morning is that they lack the person of Christ. And I think that was exactly her condition. And I think them two only girl, ungodly girls was just as lost as Cora was. I believe they're even in hell this morning. So I ask you, uh, and I'm talking to the redeemed, please, please, please don't live on the edge. Live in the center of God's will. Now I'm talking to the boss. I believe predestination from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, but I did you come. Bible says that, does it not? Yeah. I bid you to trust him. Bible says this, 
Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Seek you. Don't wind up. Well.